Okay, well, um, I haven't uh, put anything together for a while. I actually haven't had a day off uh, from work since 4th of July weekend, so it's been tough to find time. But I did manage to get in um, a few games on the 3rd of August, and um, actually was having a bit of trouble until I made some adjustments to the deck. So let me bring the changes up, or at least the changes as I was playing them. Uh, what I found is that the format slowly shifted towards a more artifact heavy uh, build. So I've actually ended up putting Vandal Blast uh, back into the deck along with by force. So I, and then in addition to that, because it's all about mana, I, I ran Armageddon Ravages of War as well. So the idea was basically to, to, um, focus very hard on mana suppression, mana denial, uh, and choose the right targets. So if I sort by color, it looks like that. Now I have since made some changes and I'll go over those at the end, but this is what I played um, at that date. So we'll take a look at what happened. But yeah, it took me a few times to go 5-0 um, on the third because the first couple of games I hadn't added the extra artifact removal and um, and uh, it made it a lot harder in the games that I played. So game one, I'm playing against Mox and I think we actually get paired in the final, but he's running a different deck by that time, which is kind of interesting. But in round one, he's playing Selvala and I have a great hand. So any, any hand where you get to float in a first turn Ancestral, generally pretty good. My opponent's got an Ancient Tomb hand into Tireless Tracker and that's pretty good too. So that's going to probably draw him quite a few cards. So I decided on turn two, I'd rather get the Signet down and try to keep up with... He's got the Ancient Tomb, so I need to keep up as best I'm able. He gets a Utopia Sprawl onto, um, onto Snow-Covered Land, and then Hall of Gemstone hits the board. So now I can't actually play Brea this turn, and there's no way for me to um, vindicate his uh, Utopia Sprawled Land or his Hall of Gemstone. So... I just get scroll rack down and play with um, pick up a land using is it boiler works and play with uh, adjusting the rest of my hand finding a jeweled amulet so on the next turn he plays Selvala his tireless tracker is growing so it'll be much harder to draw a card off of um, off of uh, uh, his Selvala's ability so I play my fifth land Cascade Lotus tap for three white Swords to Plowshare, his Tireless Tracker, play Land Tax, and charge my Gilded Amul or Jeweled Amulet with white. Pass the turn. So next turn I have potentially Land Tax and Ancestral Resolving. On his turn he gets a Titania out. And I stack my effects incorrectly. I should have taxed first, but we'll have to roll with it. Luckily I didn't hit a basic land here, so it wasn't too bad. So go ahead and take three lands, and I find a Demonic Tutor. So I'm going to DT. Titania is a big threat. And of course his commander is as well. So I need to I fig decide I need a Demonic Tutor to clear the board. So I go ahead and get that done. And then pass for the turn. So Hall of, with Hall of Gemstone out, I'm not going to do a lot of countering here. And I'm not going to be... I, I'm having a tough time. But I actually, because of the Jeweled Amulet on white, is it Signet for blue-red? And Gilded Lotus for black, I was actually able to play Brea. So on the next turn I get... Um, Lightning Bolt, and I've got Land Tax running with uh, Scroll Rack now. So I play a land, um, use Scroll Rack. Swing in for some damage. And pass for the turn. So I'm sitting on Deprive and Force of Will with Impulse. So my opponent's a little low on cards, but he does have... Last turn he did get a Carpet of Flowers out, so he's getting... Um, one mana off of my one and only island, which I deprive back to my hand to counter an Umbral Mantle that would have been potentially uh, infinite. I then use the remaining blue to charge my Jeweled Amulet. And my opponent, with not much else going on in his hand, uh, decides to scoop it up. This Carpet of Flowers is now not producing any mana whatsoever. And um, from there, I would have been able to uh, tax rack even further. I only have three lands in play after all even though I have four, five, six, seven, eight, eight mana, sometimes nine. My opponent, on the other hand, has two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine as well. 
So I'm actually even on mana with just the three lands, which is pretty nice. And I would have been pulling ahead with the Relic and Mox potentially. So good stuff was happening for me there. Not much for my opponent. I'm drawing four cards per turn and he packs it in. So we move on to round two against Swansong95. All right, take a look at that. And Swansong is playing Fairy Archmage. And I've got By Force in my hand. So even though my hand is really, really awkward and I tucked a Factor Fiction to the bottom, I decided to keep just because Tithe can make my hand a lot better. And against Teferi, By Force is one of the most powerful cards in my deck. So I just need to get some mana so that I can do something. My first draw is a Spell Pierce, which is really good to have. And my second draw is a City of Breast. Whew. Okay, so now I'm going to be able to tithe, and this hand just got... It just went from sketchy to amazing. Opponent goes for Mind Stone, so in response, I believe I'm going to tithe. Casey's got a card like Miscalculation that he can't counter with Mind Stone on the stack. And then I let the Mind Stone happen, because I have by force. I'm planning to um, push through a uh, removal spell for his artifact mana. So my turn, I played the Tundra that I just fetched and passed. Don't need to tell him I've got a Mox Opal. He doesn't need to know that. He goes for a Thran Dynamo. Again, um, I have by force, so I'm going to let that slide. And then hit it. So by force right there allowed me to kill both Thran Dynamo and a tapped Mind Stone that he wasn't able to, um, he wasn't able to uh, use to um, sacrifice and draw a card. And on his turn, he goes for an extra planar lens, which I uh, then counter. He plays a Coral Atoll, not realizing the, it, it only, it's not like regular bounce lands. You have to actually pick up an untapped land. And then he, uh, so he just basically lost his land there. So my turn, I play Palace Jailer, correctly realizing, I think, that the chances of having an actual creature um, are pretty slim. And I've got a Lightning Bolt if he has like a Snapcaster. Um, to try to, you know, take his, uh, take the Monarch back. And of course, now I'm drawing two cards per turn. I attempt a Brea. And actually, a lot of times these Teferi decks are heavy on combo and acceleration, light on defenses. So the Brea lands, which is kind of nice because it turns the Mox Opal on. So I'm able to impulse at the end of my opponent's turn. Here, I mans it back to my hand, which is a little, I don't know, weird, strange. Seems like it'd be better to save a man to win a counter war and actually get value out of it. You know, cast a spell, wait for me to counter it, remand your spell back to your hand in response. Anyway, at this point in the game, I have an active Brea, so I just decide I'm going to imprint Lightning Bolt onto Mox. I do so and use the mana to cast a uh, Tezzeret, and then with Tezzeret, I immediately fetch Winter Orb. Now I've got Muddle the Mixture in play to have protected that whole thing, and at this point, the game's over. My opponent's going to be taking tons of damage per turn. I'm drawing two cards per turn. He's fighting through a Winter Orb. I've got multiple Moxes active. Um, yeah, this is it. So he scoops it up. And I move on to Iron Claw 2016. And Iron Claw 2016 is playing, we'll see soon enough, Child of Alara, which is interesting. I, I haven't seen that in a long time. So, okay, I just got to be mindful. And I've got another Ancestral Vision hand. I mean, you know, so I recommend that um, for your play um, that you use the technique of always drawing Ancestral Vision in your opening hand. I think it just makes the games a lot easier. Very good, very good play strategy, I think. Anyway, I go for a turn two Talisman of dom Dominance. Obviously, I'm being silly. If only you could do that. Um, and I decide I don't want to imprint the Spell Snare under Chrome Mox, but, it, but because I didn't, so if I had done that, I could have countered with the Spell Snare, but then it would have been under the Chrome Mox, so I couldn't. So, you know, there you go. My hand is a little bit clunky for this reason. Anyway, on the next turn, I go ahead and just tutor up a Talisman to get myself white mana and to have a Spell Snare ready to go. My opponent tries to Cabal Therapy, names like Force of Will or Counter Spell or something. It doesn't, doesn't stick. So my turn, I draw a land, but I'm holding... It does give my opponent information, though. So he's missed a bunch of land drops. And I'm holding a Ravages of War. So I go ahead and end of turn Mystical Teachings with Spell Snare up. So we've got a Pyrrhic, and then I just type the Vamp. And my opponent lets it 
happen. So ancestral during my upkeep, which is fine because if he had countered, that would probably would have been pretty bad for him. And I go ahead and cast Nahiri and use Nahiri. Start turning lands that I don't want to play due to the uh, City of Traders into cards that I do want to play. Now I'm set up with Imperial Seal. All right, opponent goes for DT and I use counter at Imperial Seal and Nahiri, which allows me to just go get the card immediately. So on this turn, I'm going to seal and Nahiri into Jace the Mind Sculptor. So we're going to now start sculpting away some of these lands, looking for a pickup land, and boom, I found one. Let's go ahead and pick up that City of Traders. And pass for the turn. So, um, you know, of course, I've got the Ravages of War, but um, it's pretty much doing nothing here in this game for the most part. All right, so now we're going to Jace up and use a fetch land to shuffle away what we don't want. I'm keeping City of Traders in my hand because eventually I may want to use it, but... Um, and I go ahead and throw away a Chrome Mox, realizing that I'm pretty much not going to imprint any of the cards in my hand. My opponent Mysticals for Intuition passes his turn. So I go for Flashed Back Teachings. Figuring my opponent will Intuition in response, but he does not. So I go get Days so that now he cannot. And then Jason to even further lands. Now I'm putting my opponent into the thumb screws of the uh, of the um, mana denial with uh, Winter Orb as well as uh, having an expedition map up. And of course, my opponent's got to get through all these counters. It's pretty rough, rough somewhere between rough and impossible, basically. All right, so I just Jace up, and at this point, my opponent just gives up. And Rightly so. Like, th this game is just long, long over. At some point, I thought I might Jace um, Palace Jailer back down into my deck and then Ultimate Nahiri, put it in place so that I could get the uh, Monarch and hit my opponent for a couple points of damage, pick it back up in case I needed to actually remove something later. It was looking really good. So, with that, we move on to the next game. And this game's against Fluffy Pingo, which is pretty cool because Pingo, Fluffy Pingo is, um, well, he hasn't played in a while, probably um, got burnt out, but he's up at 13 trophies, so I'm playing against the the um, trophy leader. And uh, as I recall, um, FP here is playing Brea, yes. So we'll see which Brea deck uh, does better in this particular game, at least. I have to mulligan, but I mulligan into a pretty strong hand. Um, anything with Jeweled Amulet is a better hand than any... Any opening hand with Jeweled Amulet is better than almost any hand without it. However, even though I'm sitting on a Spell Snare, my opponent has turned to Cavern of Souls on Human for Dark Confidant. Always painful to see tech that um, I have used uh, now getting used against me. I do get to play a turn two Confidant of my own, though. My opponent goes ahead and reveals Umazawa's Jite. And goes for an Orzhov Signet, which I am able to Spell Snare thanks to the Amulet. All right, so I drew a Windswept Heath. And I go ahead and just tap for two, play the Heath, kill my City of Traders. I don't have time to um, wait for a pickup land because I immediately want to kill the Dark Confidant, getting rid of the Jeweled Amulet, and press for some damage. So now the board state's even on mana. Um, he's slightly ahead on cards in hand, but I'm ahead on cards in board which is much stronger. And Dark Confidant's quickly fixing the cards in hand situation as well. And look at that land tax. Fantastic. So I get a few more points of damage in, knowing that I can remand if he has something like... Uh, well, Snapcaster wouldn't do it, but um, because I actually have the remand, I don't... I don't... Um, okay, so I need to pause. So... I might have trade. I might have ended up trading a confidant for a snapcaster there, but I would have been okay because the then he would have lost a snapcaster like on my last attack, because he wouldn't have had mana to actually cast a spell. So even though it would have been a trade of a better creature, which is the confidant, it wouldn't have been the worst thing ever because it would have at least nullified a card that's generally a two for one. Meanwhile, um, what actually happened is my opponent tried to thought seize me, and he did not. And I thought, you know. The thing is, he, he thought sees me with the Badlands leaving two mana up, one of which does produce black for Thoughtseize, and I decided to remand it only because <clears throat> if he allowed it to go back to his hand and then thought sees me again, my thinking was that would probably eat up his whole turn, and uh, he might have decided to not thought sees me and make a two mana play 
instead, like a signet or talisman, in which case um, I would have been safe from the thought seize for one turn. And what I really wanted was to not be thought seize so that I could get land tax down. But actually what he did was he took, so he, he did um, go ahead and mana leak my remand so that he could, his thought seize would connect and I wouldn't get to draw a card off remand. And then he snagged the vindicate out of my hand and missed a land drop. So he took the vindicate because, you know, if I drew a land or a confidant into a land, I would be able to really press down hard on his mana. But I couldn't, like, I was, from my perspective, I'm completely happy because I'm holding Talisman land tax. So I would absolutely love to go from drawing two cards per turn to, you know, drawing five. So now we proceed and uh, I get a uh, construct into play. Uh, maybe I didn't have the talisman yet, but regardless, I had the tax, and that's what I really wanted. So, in fact, I didn't have the talisman. Finding talisman here was extremely nice, simply because of the way that it curved out. All right, so he finally gets his fourth land, and he plays Nahiri, which is really bad. Super hard to interact with that card. Um, and uh, Exile's Dark Confidant, finally. So I get to tax and play Brea and hope that he doesn't have a sweeper. So he Nahiri's in two. A sweeper. Uh, and then plays his Jete, which we knew about. No problem there. The bigger problem is that I can't counter his um, his commander when he does play it. So I do find a Nahiri of my own and decide uh, to Merchant Scroll in a Mystical Tutor and pass. So I have a counter spell up, even though he does have Brea and I can't stop the uncounterable Brea that he's about to play. So he goes ahead and hears and then passes. But I can deal with one problem at a time. So I Mystical Tutor first. And then I go ahead and Impulse into the card that I want, which is Vandal Blast. Yay for adding additional tech to the deck. So now I, I drew a counter spell, which was pretty nice right there. Um, I, so now I'm able to Vandal Blast him, um, plus up the ready and pass. Um, so his Brea is gone. His... Uh, Signet's gone, his Jete's gone, and he loses his flyers. On his turn, he kind of responds in kind with a by force, but it's nowhere near as painful for me. All right, so now I go ahead and activate the ready to get multiple Orzov Signets from his graveyard. And having I was having a little bit of problems with tapping my mana to make it do the right thing, but my opponent's got zero cards in hand. I have had drawn four and drawn and played four lands off that land tax. It's been amazing. So I transmute. With exactly the right amount of mana, go get a Snapcaster and smash his Nahiri before he ultimates it and puts an Emrakul into play. Or whatever he was going to go get. On his turn, he plays Bray and passes. I floated, I had, a, oh, I, sorry, I had exactly enough mana to also float Ancestral Vision. So anyway, so he puts an Emrakul into play. On my turn, I go ahead and just play Brea and then uh, make a token with the ready. Sack two things to kill his Brea, leaving me with one flyer and pass. I do not have Counterspell up, but I do have Daze. Opponent goes for Orzov Signet, or Dimer Signet rather, and then just gives up because at this point he's just so far behind. He could send in two Thopters at Duretti. I'll go ahead and trade a Thopter for Thopter. Duretti will drop to one <coughs> counter, excuse me. And then on my turn I um, plus up Duretti. Of course I would play Nahiri and just um, exile his Thopter. And then I'm sitting on triple Counterspell, you know, or two, two counter spells and a possible, and uh, there's no there's no coming back for him at this point. He's a long way before he gets enough mana to play Bray, and when he finally does, I'm just going to sack two artifacts and kill it. And meanwhile, my opponent's at 10, so actually, probably, he would attack and kill, he would, he would attack and do the thing I said, and then I hit him back for six and then just finish him off with artifacts, because actually... Uh, he had to take a lot of... He took four from Toxic Deluge, two from Thoughts, so that's six, two from Vampiric, so that's eight. He did a Sack Land, which was nine, ten, two Sack Lands. His Dark Confidant um, lived for at least one turn and did two more to him. So he's on 12 points of self-inflicted damage, so I actually had not not realized how low he was. So, yeah, good, good stuff there. Whereas I had done two... Uh, five points of self-inflicted damage plus a few from sack lines five six seven so fun game and i'm sure that the next time i face uh fluffy pingo it uh it could be um the case it'll be quite dangerous and difficult 
as it ever is in the uh, Brea mirror. So finally, for the last game, um, I play Mo Mox again, and this person is now playing Leovold, which is interesting. So I must have lost the first game, changed decks, and then made it all the way to the finals in the amount of time it took me to find opponents and actually play them and win. All right, so but I have I have to mulligan my first hand, but I have a, a strong second hand, not a not an insane one, but certainly a very good one. And my opponent's hand is a little slow. And because he's a little slow, my hand is much better than it would normally be. But he's got this Deathrite Shaman that keeps inadvertently nerfing my um, Logic Knot to some degree. And now I can't even set up the Wasteland Crucible thing because, well, first of all, I don't want to Wasteland my opponent and give him a card with Leovold out. So the, the, the main thing right now is get Leovold off the table. So boom, my opponent's already up a card. And then I don't really want to Wasteland... Um, even with Deathrite Shaman out, so um, I'm going to sit on Logic Knot. So my opponent plays Reclamation Sage, which I can actually not for one. Um, using the Arid Mesa, which is great because now my opponent can't Deathrite with it. And I get to leave one mana untapped so he can't daze me back, which is very, very cool. All right, so I get Wasteland out and I use it to cast Demonic Tutor. And Slam Nahiri, such a hard card to deal with. I've, I am more and more impressed with this card. It is what a good card it is. And that sets me up so that I can Imperial Seal next turn and then uh, pick up the card that I actually seal for. And of course, ironically, I just get a Vampiric Tutor. So I just lost a Vampiric Tutor and completely space out about how Leovold interacts with Nahiri's ability. So I basically discarded... I, I cast Imperial Seal and discarded of Empiric Tutor for no reason whatsoever. Total, total screw up. Anyway, my opponent's turn, he plays Creeping Corrosion, destroy all artifacts, so I sack him to kill his Leovold. If only I had done that before activating Nahiri last turn. He plays Baleful Strix, but now I finally get the card that I've Empiric Tutored for last turn, which is Tezzeret in the Winter Orb. And I plus up Nahiri and discard nothing, this time intentionally. All right, so on my turn, Tezzeret lost a counter. I go ahead and hurry away his Strix. X is zero on Tezzeret. I wasteland him. Play land past the turn. And that's it. My opponent gives up. He's not going to beat. He's almost completely tapped out. His uh, commander costs seven. He's facing down a winter orb and two planeswalkers. And it's just not happening. So he throws in the towel and we get a 5-0 finish. So now that I showed you what I did with the deck as it was... I'll show you the deck as it is. I have made some adjustments. I have been less and less impressed in the current environment with, uh, not for trade. That's absolutely not what I wanted to open. With, um, I've been less and less impressed in the current environment with um, with the Armageddons. Or I, I just feel, no, I, I'm always kind of impressed by them. And, and certainly I'm impressed when you when you pop them when you need them. But um, there's plenty of cases where you don't need them. It's like the more aggressive the environment is and the cheaper aggro type cards, the less good those cards are because you have to put yourself in a winning position to stop the early, you know, offense. And then once you've put yourself in a winning position, a lot of times you just want to, um, uh, it involves multiple Brea casts. And then so Armageddon is just kind of, eh. So um, much stronger in a format where the way that they put pressure on you is by either you know, producing tons of mana via islands and, uh, you know, Baral, tons of counter spells, or where they're green, giant green ramp. But with that not being as mu as frequent in the format or, you know, necessarily as difficult to face as, uh, you know, it could be, uh, I have adapted the deck to this version here. So the Armageddons are completely out. I'm not even bothering with... Um, I'm not even bothering with uh, limited resources, as a matter of fact. What I put in there is an extra disenchant. And as I said before, I'm running both Biforce and Vandal Blast. So I put the additional disenchant in there because, well, I say additional. I put disenchant in there uh, because I very much want to kill Sylvan Libraries, for starters. But there are other enchantments that, um, that are pretty threatening that I, I'd like to be able to deal with. Um, obviously, as for Told being an ex uh, a very good example of that. But I've also started to see things like Future Sight crop up and a couple of other cards that um, I just don't want on the table. And I want easy ways to, like, I want to be able to muddle the mixture to go get Disenchant so that I can um, so that I can deal with a card or I want to be able to, you know, just fairly easily 
uh, handle it or potentially even Snapcaster back my answer um, to take out cards like that. So um, I'm just I'm not a fan of the original, and so that you know there it is. It's back in the deck. Uh, any other changes? I don't think I have made much. Um, but this is the list as it as it currently stands, and I do look forward to putting together a video with this list uh, if I can ever find the time. But uh, you know, work and family comes first, so we'll see. Anyway, scrolling down so you can get a look at the rest of the lands underneath the tundra. I still have the same mana base: underground sea, verdant catacombs, volcanic island, wasteland, watery grave, windsep teeth, and wooded foothills. Go ahead and scroll back up. So if you'd like to try the build as I believe it ought to be currently, uh, this is it. And hopefully you will be entertained and have a good time and, and win some tickets. And, you know, as always, let me know what you think in the comments. Thanks very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.